Hi guys, welcome to the Ozark Midland and Southern Railway. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. And I also want to thank those people who have subscribed to, uh, to the railroad. I very much appreciate you all. Um, again, thank you very much for, for taking the time and doing that for me and for the railroad. Last, uh, in my last video, I was uh, standing in the same spot as I am right now in the, in the center of the one of the railroad's two reverse loops. Um, and I was talking about how I was gonna finish up putting a thin coat of plaster over the uh, blue foam uh, base that I had created uh, for, for my bluff. Um, so I, I got that done, it's dried, and then this week, beginning Monday, Monday, I started mixing small batches of plaster and carving, then you know, getting them adhered to the uh, to the uh, my base my uh, my bluff and once it began to set I started carving away using uh, using my various little tools and uh, I'll show you those here in just a moment but I mixed small batches of plaster uh, used my tools to begin carving the rock work uh, moved to, it took me about oh probably about seven or eight small batches of plaster to get this done um, yeah, it's probably closer to yeah, a good eight batches I bet you um, once I got the plaster on there, I kind of waited for it to be, you know, I kind of would shape it with my spatula and then kind of wait for it to start to set. And once it began, you know, getting pretty firm, I began to work, I began to work, uh, uh, the striations and the, and began working the, sh the shapes, getting the detail into the rock work, trying to get as much in there as I could before it actually began to really harden up. Uh, even, but even within, when it started to harden up, I still I actually, actually like that as well because I would use a, a screwdriver then um, to begin to kind of really digging in there and working gouging out areas and and uh, uh, it's just interesting how the plaster responds to you know, those you know, different different techniques. Um, but I thought in, in, in the big scheme of things, I thought things turned out pretty well. In part, uh, another thing I did is I had uh, pictures of taken of bluffs in Missouri and Arkansas, and I use those to kind of help not only provide some inspiration as I'm going along, but also provide some, uh, some, uh, oh, some guidance, you know, kind of reminding me uh, what it is I'm trying to achieve in, as, I was, as I was working away. Uh, and I think I did pretty good. You can kind of see, you, know, you can see the striations and the, and the uh, areas where the rock, the rock faces began to fail and, and you know, deteriorate. Um, these are some areas that'll be filled with. Uh, I, I'd like to have had more depth here, but uh, I'm going to have to work with what I have here. But I mean, this is gonna, these are going to be areas that are going to have uh, earth, earth, earthen material, not just uh, rock, but some earth material uh, in these two areas here, along here, a little bit. And uh, probably going to try to put some trees on the top, at least some, some, you know, some smaller trees, some half trees. Uh, in, over here on this side, it's still a little, a little damp, so I'm waiting for this to dry before I begin to, to, to color, to color the rock face. I wanted to show you real quick, quickly the tools I was, I've used. Primarily, I rely real heavily on, uh, on the, uh, the putty knife, a, uh, a paring knife. Here's the screwdriver I was kind of referring to that I would use to gouge, you know, gouge, gouge out the plaster uh, once it began to get, you know, really harden, kind of began to set. Um, I had this. Uh, brush that I would use, you know, what I'd kind of get, if there's some areas I already wanted to put a little extra striation into, I'd really kind of bear it down in, especially after it began to set, I'd, you know, get pretty hard. I'd bear it down with this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this brush, metal or wire brush, and uh, that worked out pretty good. And then uh, to kind of clean, clear things up as I was going along, I'd use a toothbrush to kind of get in the striations and the areas, different areas to kind of clean up some of the debris. Um, the same uh, with this brush here. I'd use that's what I use to kind of just sweep away the debris. This brush, small little brush, um, is is the rock was starting to uh, set and get hard. I would come along and you use the brush to bear down on it and trying to smooth out some of the rough rough edges so that would, the rock would look in some places much more weathered. Um, and that worked out pretty good too. Um, so, like I said, ready to start. As soon as this thing dries up, I want to begin doing the uh, 
coloration. I really would like to use uh, some Indian inks uh, with some isotopal alcohol. Uh, I've never, I've never really used that technique, yeah, but I've seen people who have. They've done really marvelous work with it. Um, I'd like to learn how to do it. And I've got some sample pieces of rock work that I've kind of created that I'm going to try working on this weekend and see just, you know, how well this, how well I can, do I think I can do, use the Indian inks to do this, to do the coloration is quite a bit. A lot of, I'd use a lot of washes and that, that kind of thing uh, to, to help create the, the various uh, uh, colors in the rock. Um, if I, that, if I don't feel comfortable using the Indian inks and the isotopal alcohol, I'll, re, I'll, I'll rely on uh, using some of the liquid pigments. Uh, I've also used paint, uh, but the, these, these pigments work out pretty pretty well too. I, 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 I feel like I made some pretty good rock work using these in my past railroads. Uh, so um, it'll be one of the two. Maybe it, it'll turn out to be a combination of, of both before it's all said and done. We'll just have to kind of see. But I'm, uh, I'm really kind of excited about getting to the, the point now that I can begin to color the rock. What I'd like to do now uh, is to... Um, Take, take a little bit of time to run, run a, tra uh, a train around, uh, the, around the railroad. Um, I've got a, a, a train being made up in the yard as we speak. And I've got a featured locomotive. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's kind of near and dear to the railroad. Uh, you'll see it when you see it. You'll, you'll understand why. Um, uh, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop now. I'll go over to the yard and we'll pick it up there and uh, take, and take, take a train or, uh, the last couple of minutes and run a train around the railroad. Well, it looks like we pulled up just in time. Missouri Pacific RS-11, 4611, was just getting ready to pull out of the yard when we uh, drove up in the car. I honked and asked if I could just have a moment to take a quick video and to say a word about her. 4611 appeared in the uh, Lionel Volume 2 catalog for 2002. So she's got a few years on her. But despite that, she is a uh, OMS uh, favorite. And you can tell why. She's just one of uh, two locomotives uh, that we have here on the railroad uh, going into the Missouri Pacific. The other being the uh, FAA uh, set. Here she goes, we made it just in time. There she goes. <laughs> 